On January 2nd, Sec Secretary of Homeland Security Janet Napolitano announced a new rule that reduces the time U.S. citizens are separated from their immediate relatives who are in the process of obtaining visas to become residents of the U.S. It's commonly referred to as provisional waiver. How to talk more about this is attorney Remzi Kulen. And thanks so much for joining us and Happy New Year. Good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you again. Happy New Year. Now, this new ruling is actually bringing new hope to, to folks. Can you explain what's going on here? Well, this is the Obama, Obama administration's clear goal of uh, doing something with regards to the immigration reform. This is one of the steps Obama administration is taking towards that um, ultimate goal where they can, you know, provide legal status to 15 million illegal immigrants in the U.S. But it's not that yet. It's not the amnesty we're talking about. This is just a, uh, while we are going through that road, this is just a small provision which will allow people who entered this country unlawfully. So it's not the 15 million, it's a much smaller Much group. smaller group because you ha in order to be qualified, you have to have a certain U.S. citizen immediate relative. Um, that would be U.S. citizen spouse, U.S. citizen parent, or U.S. citizen minor children. And you have to be able to prove that these people are going to be suffering some kind of extreme hardship. Okay. Especially U.S. parents and U.S. citizen spouses, not children. Only, only in that scenario you will be allowed to apply for a stateside waiver within the U.S. And who decides if it's some sort of a hardship? I mean, is there a hearing? That's, no, there is no hearing. It's all on file. And in the old days, it was the U.S. Consul abroad okay. in your home country. Now, this rule provides that you don't even have to go outside of the U.S. The procedure, the procedure is going to be handled by the USCIS, U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, while you are in the U.S. So that gives you the benefit of spending all that time you're going to spend for waiver. You are not going to be sp separated from your family. And what would be considered, say, a hardship? Would it be like a death in the family or something like that? Or? It could be. Th the most common thing we see is economic hardship. Okay. For example, a spouse, an illegal spouse is not, is not working, does not have the work authorization, or will leave the U.S. In that scenario, the U.S. citizen spouse will suffer extreme hardship with, with, with respect to the economic uh, situation. The other might be medical condition. Okay. One other thing might be the situation at the home country uh, where there is a fear of persecution, for example. Okay. So these are the things, I mean, there is no limit to it, but the mo these are the most common things that we see. So you've gotten a r r an approval. What are the next steps then? Once the approval is processed, then U.S. citizens, uh, USCIS will let the Department of State know that they approved the waiver. So then the person will going to, uh, w is going to have an interview at the U.S. Consul abroad. So that means you still have to travel to your home country if you, need to get, if you want to get the green card. Okay. So you go to the consulate and you have your approved waiver and then you are going to have an interview, green card interview at the U.S. consulate. And, they, and then if they approve it, then you can come to the U.S. with your green card. Well, what if USCIS does not approve it? I'm sure not everybody gets approval, but what happens if you're turned down? If you get turned down, there is no procedure for appeal or motion to reopen, we consider, but you can fix whatever that needs to be fixed in that application. And if you're still eligible, you can still apply. You can file for a second waiver uh, at, the, at the USCIS Citizenship and Immigration Service. And I do understand that there's an approaching deadline on this as well. There's no deadline. It's just that you cannot, right now you cannot file because there is no file, uh, there's no forms to be filled out. It's not yet uh, published. You can apply, the first date that you can apply That's is March is. 4th, Okay, I was going to say there's an upcoming, uh, so it's March 4th when people should start applying. Yes, that's okay. the first date. Not, no, no applications before that. And, and where do they do so? They need to definitely talk with an attorney. It's not something that they can do on their own. It's a very complicated process. Um, the best thing they can do is they can now start contacting with uh, immigration attorneys to be able to provide what kind of information they want. Well, it's not an easy issue, so I thank you so much, Remzi, for coming on board and uh, explaining it to us. Uh, thank you very much, and good to see you. Thank you.